Now at this point, I've been able to get the engine from making only a quarter of a turn to almost making a full rotation, like I said here. So it's like it's just shy of 10 degrees. Oh, now the hard part, back breaker 1000. Oh man, it's really heavy. <laughs> never give up, never surrender. Oh, I'm surrendering a little bit. So we got the jump pack. We're going to throw it around here. Not too much, but obviously it spins free. So, you know, again, I'm pretty confident that our, that our bottom end is doing okay on this engine. Nothing sounds out of the ordinary. my friends howdy welcome to the channel i'm luke thunderhead 29 here on youtube and today we're getting back to our 1970 torino might be a cobra might not i don't know it's got a 429 engine in it in our last video we went through it it sat for 20 years you know um, it ended up outside at some point the humidity got to the thing so today is going to be a defining moment in what we end up doing with this vehicle now we're going to try and figure out why the engine is stuck. We've got it pretty free. You know, we found a lot of things and we're really close. It almost makes a full rotation. So we're going to complete our dive into it and just see what we're up against. I do actively have the car for sale. Um, so if you're interested, leave me a comment. But the farther I go on this thing, the more likely it is that I'm not going to be able to let the thing go. Um, I'm really tempted to build a budget 460 for the thing with aluminum heads. Um, in years past, you know, I've, I've been an engine builder and I'm not afraid of doing engine work whatsoever. But in this one, we're going to do a little bit of anarchy probably and see if the engine as it is can run and the car can drive. So with that, let's jump right in and just see what we're up against. We're going to have some fun with it today. Now at this point, I've been able to get the engine from making only a quarter of a turn to almost making a full rotation, like I said here. So it's like it's just shy of 10 degrees, and if my non-dominant hand could comply here, just shy, like only not making it 10 degrees or so, and I'm really resisting the urge to just grind it through that point. I bet I could. But honestly, I know that that's just going to destroy things and hurt our chances of getting this engine running if I were to, if it is possible. So with that, I think I'm going to bite the bullet here and uh, pull the cylinder heads. No love lost putting new head gaskets in the thing anyway. So, And actually, indecisiveness is king here today. So what I think I'm going to do is actually jack the car up and we'll get the bore scope in the oil pan really quick you know before we go through all this effort let's just see if the bottom end has flown apart when i got the car there was no oil on the dipstick so you know i would classify that as fairly suspicious and potentially quite problematic um, not sure how that would have transpired so you know if the bottom end's done there's no reason going any farther so let me get this car in the air we'll uh pull the drain plug stick our bore scope up in there see what we're dealing with No oil. Always a great sign. Definitely have the shaky hands today. Doing great. There we go. Hmm, doing the unibody 
hard lawn shovel here. This is the part where someone says, that thing back in the day could hop a Coke can, which who knows, maybe this car actually could. I'd honestly believe it for once. You know what they say, you're not a real mechanic unless you're laying on cardboard. I don't know who says that. Maybe that's just me, I guess. That probably also explains why I have a bad back, but you know, details. I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. I'm no scientist, but I would say missing a drain plug will make you not have any oil in the engine pretty quickly. Mildly suspicious. All right, so let's get the bore scope up in there. Super weird, but again, you know, the oil filter was painted, so just a lot of weird stuff on this car. It's an archaeological dig, 100%. And this is probably going to offend some people, but I found that every car that I purchase that has red RTV on it is always messed up every which way from Sunday. Now, there's nothing wrong with red RTV, but it's almost like the people that utilize it do the biggest amount of hackery I've ever seen on old cars. So if you guys know the correlation between that, I mean, it's definitely enough that it's not just a coincidence. You know, there's something to all that. And if you guys know, I would love to know, because it's very strange. Well, this is unfortunate. I thought that maybe the bolt was broken off in there, but you can see that it's not. This is the oil pump pickup right above the plug. So long story short, we're not gonna be able to get up there and, and see anything, um, which would have been really nice, but we're just gonna have to risk it. And I guess we're on to pulling the heads because, you know, can't really do anything down here. Getting the header bolts off here. And conveniently, they're really loose, but honestly, everything that I've come across on this car is really loose. The intake bolts like concerningly loose, you know, kind of raises an eyebrow, you know, did Sergeant Wiener arms put this car together or, you know, how much stuff is going to fall apart if it does drive and as soon as it hits the road. Man, this engine is just about as tight as it could possibly be in these fenders. This thing is just huge in here. Check out this header clearance. You can basically only slide a piece of paper in between the two. It's about as tight as a, well, you know, we can't say that on YouTube, but it's a, it's a pretty tight fit in there. No love lost taking those out. Obviously we need to clean them up a little bit. A little bit of rust on them. A little bit of rust on a few things. There's our little um, tip retainer that's cast into the rocker itself. So, you know, it stays on the valve stem. You can't get buck wild. A little bit different than your normal stud guide plate stuff. I talk to myself a lot when I do YouTube. <laughs> these head bolts here aren't for the young. There is some serious torque on these. Can't remember what the 385 series is, but it's a huge bolt. Had to clearance my socket to make it work. There we go. And there is a rhyme or reason to taking out head bolts, so let me just show you what I'm doing here. Because if, if you do it wrong, you can damage a head, and, you know, we don't want to do that, question mark. So. so when you're relieving stuff, it's the same as when you're torquing stuff. You want to go from out to in. If you were to torque the outside of the head and move inward, you know, um, basically you can get a banana effect. And when you pull it down the center, it'll either not seal or it will crack. And in the same way, when you take them out... You want to start on the outside and work in or else, you know, you can stress the cylinder head as you take stuff apart and again, it can crack and, you know, that would be pretty unfortunate. Look at these big old thicksters. God dang. There's some big head bolts in this thing. Just massive head bolts in this thing weigh more than a whole Windsor engine. Man, 
just huge. Hmm, to hit the shock towers or not, or to remember these have to be in here when I set the head on. I really don't want to hit the shock tower. Obviously this engine was assembled and then shoehorned in here. So now, the moment I've all been waiting for. Oh. Hey look, some coolant. A lot of coolant. All of the coolant. Oh, now the hard part. Back breaker 1000. Oh man, it's really heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna blow my gizzard clean out trying to do this one. Oh yeah, come on. Oh, never give up, never surrender. Oh, I'm surrendering a little bit. Come on, head bolts. Be my friend. Can you go this way? Oh. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Definitely gonna have to install these with a cherry picker. Oh boy. All right, one cylinder head off. And this is the side I've been suspicious of. Someone was nice enough to put a copper coat on that thing. So that come off without too much trouble. If you ever want to punish your children, a great way is to give them a razor blade and have them scrape gaskets all day. So I got a fair amount of ATF in this cylinder still, so we'll clean that out. But before we get too far into here, let's take a look at the cylinder head and why I kind of was suspicious of this side. So most of the intake ports, actually all of them, look about like this, you know, normal, what you'd expect to see. And then our cylinder four back here looked kind of suspicious. You know, it had some rust in it and whatnot. Now here's our cylinder with the stuck valve. Now that thing did not go all the way back in. So we're gonna have to pull that out, clean up the guide and see what's going on there. Probably just junk on the guide. You can see we have rust in this cylinder. All right, so this is a fun one here. At this point, I think I found probable cause to determine why this car was parked whenever it was parked, you know, and then naturally time took its toll on it after that. But the head gasket was a dead giveaway when I pulled the cylinder head that something might be up here. And then, you know, once we got the oil out of the cylinder, it became pretty obvious what probably went on with this car. So this engine got the Yeehaw Special at one point and the copper coat on the cylinder head was a mild giveaway, but I had to dig a little bit deeper to confirm. So the first thing I want to point out is if you look at the top of the engine block, someone cleaned it up with a flapper wheel. You know, you really want to spend the time to scrape gaskets with a razor blade, make sure everything's all clean. You know, people get impatient and they go buck wild with a little flapper wheel and like on a little die grinder and that will just never ever seal you're super lucky if it does highly likely that it never will you know you want to be patient and whoever did this very clearly wasn't now it does look like stock pistons and stock bore so you know this engine was probably put in a long time ago and it could be bored out now here we have our cylinder four cylinder so if i had to guess you know it looks like where we're stopping is right into this rusty area now with the engine and seeing all of these things going on if i had to guess it blew the head gasket and then it sat for a really long time initially i thought moisture had percolated up through the engine from sitting now that's probably the case with what's inside of the engine but as far as this scenario here you know the intake port having rust basically it blew the head gasket the cylinder kind of fills with coolant and then someone mothballed it and it sat for a long time and you can even see if we get down from this angle there's a rust line where the water would sit in here so you know when we had the oil in you kind of see how it was laying in the cylinder and we have a nice rust line that looks like we had that scenario 
you know, no amount of rain or anything is going to do something like that unless you have an open engine. And our carburetors were not seized up, so I don't believe that's the case. But seeing all this going on and everything, I think we blew a head gasket somewhere here. This cylinder got a little water in it, probably attributes to the stuck valve. And then this cylinder really got the bad hand on this one. So with that, I think I'm going to go get the uh, ball hone and just clean this up and see if this engine will turn around. Because being a standard bore, it can still be bored out. It's not entirely junk if the bottom end is still okay. And from this angle here, you can kind of see the water line where the coolant water or whatever kind of sat in the engine. Um, you know, very distinct line in that cylinder. So, you know, good chance it was a good old head gasket fault. All right, we have our 240 grit ball hone. And if you're going to re-ring an engine, which oftentimes I recommend against, but if you're going to do it, you want to put iron rings in because they will reseal and you want to use a 240 grit ball hone. You see people with the big stone hone thinking that's the thing to do. Um, definitely not. This is the animal you want to use. I want to lube the cylinder up really good and I'm not sure what I'm going to do at the moment here, but obviously on disassembly I have to pull these pistons out anyway and they got to come out the top and this cylinder definitely isn't going to play ball with us for that. So we're going to reapply our ATF as a nice lubricant. Is, this is actually one time where the stone hone would be nice, but on the off chance that this does clean it up decent enough to consider running it, which would be absolute anarchy to do, you know, at least the stone hone or the ball hone here isn't going to absolutely destroy it. Oh, and this is for a four inch bore Windsor, so we're going to have to get creative with this, I think. like factory who would ever know it's only about 30 seconds of the ball hone got most of it out you can see now where the water definitely sat much more prominent of a water line and there you go all cleaned up you couldn't see the water line in the video you definitely probably see it now so that piston was probably all the way down and then you know coolant went in and over time jammed her up pretty good. Moment of truth here to see if that's what's hanging it up and the bottom end of this 429 is okay as far as the crank and connecting rods. Oh, she's coming up. Come on. Yep, and there she goes. Gonna go back down. Sure is. Okay, that's a full rotation. That was it. Pretty confident. It was a head gasket failure. Interesting. So I think at this point we can deduce a pretty likely story as to the history and background of this 70 Torino drag car. So, you know, if I had to guess, it was a pretty decent nice car at one point you know it was painted yellow everything on the build sheet from the transmission back looks to still be the same now everything from the transmission forward as far as the engine is concerned you know that's different than what's on the build sheet it is definitely a 429 but it's like a stock one with a mild cam that was stuffed in here either someone blew the engine and bought it or this fellow who did all this stuff bought it blew the engine up and this is his handiwork, or, you know, somewhere along the way, some tomfoolery was had with the engine with um, a very curious DIYer. But I'm pretty confident here that the other side of our engine is totally fine. This is our problem area, despite the other things we found that were just caused by sitting. So we got the jump pack. We're going to throw it around here. Not too much, but obviously it spins free. So, you know, again, I'm pretty confident that our that our bottom end is doing okay on this engine. Nothing sounds out of the ordinary. 
Now, you know, there's a few ways you could go with this. Definitely you'd want to pull it out, uh, take all the pistons out, and you could ball hone it and put new rings on it. There's hardly any ring ridge on this engine, which is extra sad because it was a very clean 429 when it went in here. But with what someone did to the top of the block here, um, you know, my professional opinion is that it should go into the machine shop, be decked, and then at that point, why skimp on $150 for a bore job? I would definitely go through and bore it at that point to get your cylinder concentricity back and then put some 30 over pistons in it and then go to town. But, you know, it's a good core, but it kind of raises an eyebrow where if you do any tomfoolery, you could ruin it and there's still, um, it's very easy still to save this 429. So with that, my friends, I think that concludes our archeological dig on the 70 Torino drag car. At this point, I see that there's three options. There's A, to sell the car, um, but also it's a pretty good car, really good core drag car. Highly unlikely I would pick up another car like this for under $10,000, okay? So you have that. You can pull this engine, rebuild this 429 and put it back in. Um, I would definitely recommend to myself that I should pull it out and not try and make it run the way it is. And then option three is to build a pretty stout 460, which you can get a short block of those, pretty cheap, some budget aluminum heads and really go to town. So, you know, hard telling. I got other projects like this supercharged 65 Galaxy with a TKO 500 that's literally dropping in a distributor and putting in a carb away from running. I moved and it got mothballed here and that's where that ended. So I got some things to do, some things to think about. Um, if you guys are in my shoes, I'm curious what you would do. Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you for the next one. Ouch, just hit my, <laughs> hit my knee on that cylinder head. So, you know, who knows? By the next video, I might have that engine already out of there. Yeah.